What's up YouTube? It's been hot sack and I haven't actually put out a video in a very long time, um, about two weeks now, and that was because last week I was at a Latin convention. As you may know from my extracurriculars video and stats, I was very involved in the Junior Classical League, and this was my final Latin convention, my final Nationals one, and it was kind of very emotional, so I couldn't really put out videos during that time. Also, some other updates, I finally got my housing for school, um, so I know one of my roommates watches my videos and knows a little bit about me already. And the other one, if you're watching this, I am sorry because this is a real me and you'll be stuck with this for the rest of the year. Oh yeah, glasses. I got new glasses and these don't reflect light as much so you can actually see my eyes when I'm talking into the camera. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So today's video is going to be about underrated colleges that you should apply to based on your dream schools. So colleges that are like your dream schools but not as hard to get into and just what less well known and you probably haven't added them to your college list. Today is August 2nd, yesterday the Common App was actually released and people are probably formulating their college list right now and everything's in flux and it's getting too real. So yes, if you're having those college confidential scaries where you think you're not going to get into any other school, look at this video and keep watching. So the first two schools I'm going to be talking about are Harvard and Yale. Uh, Harvard and Yale are actually very similar to each other, they're both well-rounded, all in all disciplines. They're focused on the liberal arts, they're also big research universities, and these are some schools that you should probably look into if you're applying to these. Um, one is kind of a consortium, being the Claremont Consortium. So Claremont McKenna, Pomona College, Pitzer, uh, Scripps, and Harvey Mudd. They all share resources and basically five different liberal arts schools that have a little bit of a different feel, but you can use resources among the other schools, so that's really useful makes it feel like you're not just in a tiny, li tiny liberal arts school. Also, there is Tufts University in Boston, but they're still in a sports league with a bunch of other liberal arts schools, so there's still that emphasis on that tiny community and having all of that, and they also still have some good programs and sciences. I sound like I'm having a stroke sometimes because I'm trying to speak so fast and get this video down in time, but I'm actually wasting time by talking to the video camera right now. Next set of schools, Chicago and Columbia. Chicago, U Chicago, and Columbia are both well known for having very robust core curricula, and that means basically they have a big emphasis on the liberal arts and having a shared academic experience. If you really like that and like being well-rounded, you should definitely look into these next two schools. One being St. John's College in Maryland and Santa Fe. They're two different campuses, they're both affiliated, you can transfer between them, but they have this thing called the Great Books Curriculum. Basically, everyone learns Greek, everyone learns French, and everyone just shares in this academic experience where you read the same books and talk about the same thing. And it's very well-rounded, very intellectual, and uh, you can't really major in something different. But at the same time, you're going to come out of it with a broad education. With Whitman College, on the other hand, I feel like it definitely captures the intellectual aspects of Columbia and University of Chicago. So definitely look into it. They have a big emphasis on the liberal arts, and it's in Walla Walla, Washington, which is apparently a very beautiful place. One of my friends is going there next year, and she told me that once she visits, she didn't want to leave. So even if you're going to a place in the middle of nowhere, Hey, that could be a good thing. Next set of schools, I'm going to group these three schools together because they kind of have similar cultures. So Stanford, UCLA, and University of Michigan. Three schools that are all high in academic achievement, but also have a big school spirit culture. So two schools that you should definitely look into here are um, Lehigh University in Pennsylvania and Purdue University in Indiana. This is because those two schools have big sports cultures as well, but they're also very, very good in STEM, which is what the three schools that I mentioned before are very well known for. Stanford is definitely more STEM oriented. Um, University of Michigan has a really good engineering school and also a business school which I can talk about later in like my other recommendations. And UCLA has great engineering, just overall great sciences and they're very well known for those. Lehigh definitely satisfies the culture aspect of it but they also uh, have great science departments and also liberal arts but just the overall culture of the school is very similar to um, Stanford and UMich and UCLA. Same thing with Purdue. Purdue is very well known for their engineering programs so if you're thinking about like majoring in engineering and that's why you want to go to like UMich and UCLA and uh, Stanford, look into Purdue also. Um, it's definitely a school that's not as hard to get into but still has great quality programs. At the same time they have a freaking great basketball team. Alright, next set. MIT and Caltech. So these two schools are very, very, very STEM focused. And the next three schools I'm going to uh, mention that are good options and alternatives to these three may throw you a little bit for a loop. 
So I'm going to mention Auburn University, University of Alabama Huntsville, and also Wooster Polytechnic um, in Massachusetts. So Auburn is pretty well known as a sports school, but what people don't know is that it has a lot of research activity and a lot of research funding, especially if you want to go into sciences and engineering. Um, same thing with University of Alabama Huntsville, they have a great aerospace program and a lot of funding there. So if you're looking into aerospace engineering or mechanical engineering, look at those two schools because I'm pretty sure you can get money, especially if you think you're qualified for MIT. Worcester Polytechnic is just a heavy STEM school, they're very focused on projects project-based learning, which is something that's kind of different from other schools, and they give a fair amount of merit scholarship. Next schools, University of Pennsylvania and Princeton. The reason I group these two schools together are because they're more on the pre-professional side and also because most of their students only single major. Princeton actually won't let you double major, and at Penn, I believe it's 80% of people only major in one thing. That shows that um, they're more focused on extracurricular development and career development and also they may just be taking a lot of classes in different disciplines without feeling bound to another second major. Schools that are more career oriented like Penn which has great engineering and great business um, I would recommend Drexel University which has a great co-op program and gives a lot of money and it's also in the same city as UPenn. Um, Drexel is in Philadelphia and they're on the quarter system too and I'm not sure if you like that or not but yeah that's definitely things to consider. Another school that has a good co-op program is Northeastern University. Um, so if you don't know what a co-op program is, basically you take a term off in the middle of um, one of your school years and take it and do an internship and get real world experience. So if you're big into career development and want to boost your resume before you graduate and have to go off into the real world and find out that all of the jobs you apply for want one to three years of experience, definitely look into those. Another alternative to Drexel and Northeastern University is a white collar prison. Considering that UPenn and Princeton both send a lot of people to business and finance, why not just skip the middle part of getting an education and just go straight to prison? You'll get out earlier and then you can actually build a business legally rather than being part of a Ponzi scheme. All right. Back to being serious again. Next three I'm going to talk about are Duke, Dartmouth, and Vanderbilt. These three schools actually have a lot of cross admits, so if you're applying to any of those three, apply to the other two. I met a lot of people that were deciding between like Duke and Dartmouth or uh, got accepted into Duke, Dartmouth, and Vanderbilt. Um, I got accepted personally into Vanderbilt and Dartmouth and got waitlisted at Duke, so I'm pretty sure that that's a big indicator of what kind of student they're looking for and they're looking for similar students. So three schools that I'm going to recommend in relation to these are going to be Wake Forest University in North Carolina. Uh, a little bit on the smaller side, vibes kind of similar to Dartmouth in the sense that it's very Greek heavy but also has that liberal arts education feel of a smaller campus. Another one is going to be Colgate which is very spirited, also has a little bit of Greek life, well not really Greek life in the sense, but has the Greek culture of working hard, playing hard. And the third school is going to be Claremont McKenna because I mentioned that previously same thing. Next schools, Johns Hopkins and Cornell. These two I grouped together because they're both kind of STEM heavy, and also Johns Hopkins has a lot of pre-meds, like 55% of their incoming class is going to be pre-meds. Um, don't quote me on that because I heard it from an admissions officer that came to my school that I talked to, and she said, yeah, that's a big proportion. So yeah, I'm going to mention schools that are heavy in STEM and also pre-med. One of them is going to be the University of Washington. University of Washington actually gives a solid amount of scholarships out of state, and they also have one of the best med schools in the country um, that you can do volunteering at or do research at, so definitely look into that. Another school to look into is University of Pittsburgh. I also applied there, and they have an amazing med school and one of the best neuro departments in the country, and it's just, it's so good, and they give so many scholarships. I personally, uh, offered a lot of money there, so honestly, if you're looking for a good safety school that may give you a lot of money if you have high, stat high stats, look into Pittsburgh. All right, next, Northwestern and Notre Dame. So I grouped these two schools together because they're both Midwestern, big sports cultures, big school pride, and yeah, um, that's pretty much it. So the two schools I'm going to mention here are going to be Santa Clara University and Villanova. So um, Santa Clara is a Jesuit school in San Francisco and it has a great, a really, really good business program, which is something to consider if you're applying to the Mendoza School of Business at 
University of Notre Dame. They give us a solid amount of money and they're not as difficult to get into. Another school to consider is Villanova University in Pennsylvania. If you watch any college basketball, you know that Villanova does very well year to year and that's where their culture comes from. And they just have a really good alumni network, which is something that I find in Notre Dame and Northwestern. So, Brown. <laughs> Brown University, I couldn't really classify, classify with any other schools because it's just very unique on its own with the open curriculum and everything. Colleges that you can apply to in addition to Brown would be, this is just a shameless plug because I met a lot of people that were deciding between these two schools, but Dartmouth is very similar to Brown. Like in terms of what the school values, the flexibility, it's something that really surprised me when I got in that a lot of people were deciding between these two schools. Like I'd say the biggest cross admits with Dartmouth were Dartmouth Duke and also Dartmouth Brown. So yeah, definitely look into that more. Another alternative to Brown would be University of Rochester. University of Rochester actually has a pretty open curriculum itself. Um, they have this thing called the cluster system where basically you pick a major in one, one section like quantitative sciences, social sciences, or humanities and in the other two sections you have to pick a cluster. So like say you picked a degree in English, you'd have to pick something in the sciences and pick something in the social sciences. So you can study only history to fill that distribution requirement and also only biology or only astronomy to fill that other distribution requirement. It's pretty flexible and you can basically only study what you like. And the third school that I'm going to mention is going to be Wesleyan. Wesleyan University and Brown are actually very similar in terms of their cultures. Wesleyan is very well known for its arts. Lin-Manuel Miranda graduated from there. They have this like Hamilton prize or something. They also have a great film program, which Brown is also very well known for. Okay, next, UC Berkeley. UC Berkeley is known as an engineering school, a hard STEM sciences school. I think that two uh, alternatives to UC Berkeley that you can look into are Case Western in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and also UMass Amherst. UMass Amherst has a really, really good computer science department, and Case Western is just overall very STEM heavy, so I think you'd like that if your dream school was UC Berkeley because it has that element of competition into it and also the focus on the STEM. The next set is going to be USC, WashU, Emory, and Rice, which are all very similar to each other. And the reason why is because I found that a lot of kids from my school get cross acceptances. So I decided to like group them all together. One of the schools I'm going to mention as an alternative that's way easier to get into is the University of Utah. University of Utah has actually really great engineering programs and the school spirit is up there. And a lot of people that don't get into those schools end up considering uh, University of Utah for my school at least. And also if you go to Utah, even though it's an out-of-state public school, if you stay the summer after your freshman year, you can get in-state tuition, especially if you keep working through your freshman year and that ends up saving a lot of money. Utah's in-state tuition I believe is only like $7,000 a year. So that's definitely something to consider and I'm sure you'll also get scholarships from there too. Another option is Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. SMU has overall a very well-rounded curriculum and they give a lot of money. And finally, NYU slash BU. Those two schools have a very city-like campus. Um, they're very decentralized and they're just really integrated into the cities that they're situated in. So the natural uh, comparisons could be made to Fordham University and also George Washington University. GW is basically NYU slash BU in Washington DC and they give some merit scholarships. Fordham has two different campuses, one is integrated right in the city and one is kind of separated from everywhere else and is more like a centralized campus. So you can go between those two campuses if you want and it's just having that convenience of being in New York City for internships. So yes, thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Um, I hope this was good content. <laughs> And yeah, my voice is really hoarse now from talking so much, but thank you for watching and I hope this helped you out. Happy college application season and I'll see you in my next video.